Ninja Gaiden was released on the NES in 1988. It's loosely based on the arcade game of the same name, which came out only a few months before this version. While the arcade version was a straightforward beat-em-up, this version has an emphasis on platforming, including the ability to not only jump from platform to platform, but also to cling, climb, and scale walls in true ninja fashion, as the title of the game would leave you to expect. The ninja you play as is Ryu Hayabusa, who is on a mission to avenge his father's death. In between stages, or acts as they're referred to as, you'll get some of the most impressively presented cutscenes in the 8-bit era. They look excellent and tell a well put together story that's paced perfectly and leaves you waiting in anticipation of what's to come at the next act. Each act is broken down into multiple sublevels, each sublevel acting as a checkpoint if you die. You'll die if you run out of health. You get a meter at the top of the screen to monitor your health and you can collect potions to increase it. Another meter you want to monitor is the spirit meter, or spirit counter really. Grabbing these red or blue icons will increase your total. Red ones are worth 10, blues are 5. Spirit points allow you to unleash your special attacks by pressing up and B at the same time. There are ninja stars, regular throwing stars cost you 3 spirit points, and the stronger windmill stars cost you 5. Then there are the flames, 3 fire projectiles that are sent upward costing you 5 spirit points and the jump and slash attack, a very potent attack that slashes everything in your immediate area as you jump, also 5 spirit points. The only thing that sucks about this attack is you'll use it every time you jump. There's no way to toggle it off, so if it's your equipped special weapon, you're going to be using up a lot of spirit points out of necessity. The hourglass icon will freeze all the enemies for a short period of time, so haul ass to take advantage of these precious seconds. The fire wheel icon provides you with temporary invincibility, and much like the time freeze, it doesn't last long, so wipe out everything in the way that you can. One thing to keep in mind about your special attacks is you can't store them. Whatever the last spirit move you picked up, that's the only one you're able to use. You can't toggle back and forth. In fact, in a pretty fucked up move, if you grab the invincibility, it will replace whatever special move you have equipped at the time, and when your invincibility runs out, you have nothing. You can also get extra lives by grabbing the icons with your face on it, and these bags award you with bonus points. You're also racing against the clock. You have 150 seconds to get through each segment of the stage, so the game is fast paced by necessity. It's also hard as shit. You have to be very precise when killing certain enemies. They're often placed in locations that are difficult to access without putting yourself in danger, and they respawn, which can get frustrating as all balls when there are several enemies in one spot, and one of them drives you to retreat a bit, and then the one asshole you were able to take out comes back. And when you get hit, you bounce back, which can send you into pits to your death, and on top of that you get no recovery time after a hit, so sometimes you get bounced back into another enemy or five, depleting precious health by the shitload. The controls are responsive, but not perfect, particularly with jumping. You can't adjust your position in mid-jump, whatever velocity you put into the jump, that's where you're destined to land, and you can't turn yourself around to attack while falling. Another issue is sometimes you get knocked back and auto-cling to a wall. I never wanted to grab this wall and helplessly get butchered by these assholes, but alas, it happened. A lot of times, the difficulty is cheap like this, particularly in the later levels. It takes a lot of practice and timing, which I guess is the ninja way, but damn, I'm no ninja, and I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that neither is anyone else who played this game. So yeah, the game has flaws, the hit detection can be iffy with your attacks, there are cheap hits abound, and ultimately the difficulty is pretty extreme. Too extreme for some. But at the end of the day, no matter how much the game will frustrate you, it's pretty addicting. There's just something about being a ninja, running around, slashing people, scaling walls, kicking ass, and taking names that leaves you crawling back for more. Add to that the cool soundtrack and awesome cutscenes, and you've got yourself a fun and original platformer. So the game doesn't start off with a cutscene, but you do get an intro scene if you wait a few seconds at the title screen. Ryu Hayabusa narrates about how his father left a letter to him saying he was on his way to a life or death duel and that if he doesn't return, for his son to carry the dragon sword, the family's sword, 
and seek out American archaeologist Walter Smith. Early on, you'll come across the swordsmen. They don't really do anything aside from warm you up, so simply slash at them, and turn around as this dog comes charging at you, and slash it just before it gets to you. Cling to this sign to get up here and take out this asshole before getting a throwing star behind this lantern. By the way, you're going to want to slash at all the lanterns, or whatever floating items you will come across throughout the game and grab some spirit points. Use this sign to get up on this platform and kill this schmuck. And there's a flame behind this lantern, and right above this sign here is a jump and slash. And there's a fire wheel of invincibility in the lantern you'll need to strike while falling straight down here. Because forget about slashing behind you on the way down. This will give you time to plow through some of these douche nozzles on your way to this wall you'll have to scale. And you can grab an hourglass behind this lantern to freeze up the Nimrods at the home stretch. Just make sure to grab the windmill star in this lantern, and the boss is just ahead. You can try your luck with the short range slashing, just make sure you duck, but you've got to readjust your position cause he's gonna keep walking towards you. Thankfully his attack pattern is very basic and straightforward, walk and slash. And if you've got spirit points, smack him with a couple windmill stars to get ahead of him on points. You can always just square up with him and slash away if you've got more health than him and you'll kill him before he kills you. A cutscene commences where Ryu reveals he's being followed. A woman sneaks up on him. Although he's a ninja, he doesn't expect a girl to be dangerous enough to do him any harm and his preconception does him in as she shoots him down. And that's the end of the game. The moral of the story, don't be a sexist. I'm just kidding, it's just the end of Act 1. Act 2 starts out with a cutscene. Ryu awakens in his cell and discovers the enigmatic chick shot you with tranquilizers earlier. And now she cuts you loose, gives you a statue, and explains nothing, citing the lack of time to have such chit chat. The second act starts out with some of these ham and eggers. Slice them down and move quickly to outrun the dog that lunges from behind. There's a flame here and a windmill star here on your way down. Just watch out for the bats that fly around here. Wipe out the swordsman. Scale up the wall, and watch out for the dog that tries to sneak up on you from behind. Give him a quick turn and kill. There's a jump and slash icon here, as well as a standard throwing star up ahead. After you climb up here, kill the dog behind you, grab the windmill stars, and slash away at the rest of the schlups on your way up to the next segment. Now is when things begin to get interesting. These pricks throw daggers at you in an upward arc. Throw stars up his ass, and then you'll run into soldiers waiting to pump your guts full of lead. I guess the projectiles are starting to really make the rounds. You can slash the bullets away and then take them out, and be sure to climb down the ladder to the next screen. Jumping down will kill you. Here you'll get these green ninjas that jump out at you. Kill them as they get close to you, and grab the fire wheel here and mow everyone down on your way to this ladder. Kill the green ninja that tries to sneak attack from behind, and now you'll come across a couple of these dagger dickheads. Throw stars at them, or if you can, a well-timed slash while jumping to him will suffice. Grab the jump and slash attack here, and wipe out the swordsman you'd normally be landing on, but you'll kill him upon impact via jump. Boss is just ahead. He'll lumber across the room, swinging his pickaxe or whatever. If you don't have the jump and slash, you can easily dispose of him in a couple hits. Otherwise, you'll have to stick and move, as a boxer would say. Duck and attack, retreat, duck and attack, retreat. And when you get to the wall, jump up high and cling to it and leap over him when he gets close. Repeat the process until he's done for, and you'll get the next cutscene, where Ryu wonders aloud about the woman and the statue and heads to meet Dr. Smith. Act 3 begins with a cutscene of Ryu reaching Dr. Walter Smith, who tells the story of how he and Ryu's father found a stone tablet and statue, which turns out to be the statue the woman gave you. According to Smith, the statue possesses evil power, as a powerful demon was defeated by Shinobi, and had its powers placed into two statues. But in mid-discussion, a ninja pops in and steals the statue, so you've got to track him down and get it back. Early on, these annoying ass eagles will swoop down and spin back around towards you. Stay on the ground and turn around to swipe them when they come back in. You'll have to time your slash perfectly here, and you always want to advance once you see them, thanks to the respawning bullshit. 
grab the hourglass here to freeze the enemies, buying you time to get past the next eagle by the water pits. And there's a throwing star here along the way. Turn around and kill the cat when it comes dashing at you, and then another one will attack from the front. There's a flame up top, but you have to kill this soldier while avoiding the daggers tossed from above, and then go back to take those douchebags out. So it's up to you if you want the weapon. Carefully cross the narrow platforms, kill the eagle as it comes down to attack you, and grab the health here on your way to the second segment. There'll be these bazooka men firing a shot at a time. Jump over the projectiles and wipe them out. Climb the ladder and jump backwards to land on this strip and wipe out the dagger dude. Turn around to kill the green ninjas that pop out of nowhere and the eagles that swoop down and grab the windmill star on your way to the boss. This enormous fucker that jumps from one side of the room to the other and that's the entirety of his attack pattern as far as movements go. He also fires off three projectiles after every few jumps. You can't jump over these. Your only means of defense are to duck down and slice at the right time and you can knock the bottom two away. Run back and forth along with him and slice at him when he stops. Running as quickly as possible will also give you enough time to see the projectiles coming. If you have enough spirit points, you can use the windmill stars on him to speed up the process. Repeat until he's dead, and you'll get a cutscene where, after retrieving the statue, Ryu returns to Dr. Smith, who is dying. He was attacked when the assholes came back to steal the other statue, which Smith had in his possession. Ryu's father always having kept the other as a safety measure. Now the demon, which has been in slumber for 700 years, is waking up, and it's up to Ryu to become the ninja dragon. Smith dies in Ryu's arms, and then he's taken away at gunpoint by three wise guy looking motherfuckers. Act 4 begins with a cutscene of Ryu being confronted by the lead of these wise guy looking motherfuckers, who turn out to be the CIA, named Foster. He tells you that Dr. Smith discovered an ancient ruin in the Amazon, only to seal it off. T turns out that the demon Smith had mentioned earlier is imprisoned in the ruins, and someone named Jaquio took over the ruins at some point and is attempting to resurrect the demon, which he would be able to fully control. He sends you to the Amazon to stop him. Quickly run and jump onto the platform in front of the soldier to kill him before he can fire. It's otherwise a pain in the battered ass to attack him while he's at the edge. Kill the eagles that swoop down and jump towards the dagger douche, killing him as you land on the platform. It's easier to take the top route here, but there are a lot more rewards on the bottom. A windmill star and then an extra life. Just slip down and kill the soldier first. Make your way through here and watch out for the green ninja that comes barreling towards you. Swipe him as quickly as you can and move on and take the ladder up. This is probably the most annoying fucking eagle in the game. It'll hone in on you as you climb and persist in trying to knock you off into the pit. Try to avoid it and then hop off the ladder when there's enough space to free yourself up for an attack when it comes back. After a few more familiar enemies, you'll get a brief cutscene of a view of the temple from atop the rock. Now you're in a mine shaft. Kill these knights early on, they're basically your run of the mill swordsmen, and these bouncy ninjas will fall from above and spring forward. Either jump over them as they come down, or anticipate where they'll land and position yourself accordingly for a kill. There's a windmill star up here by this weird looking fuck that tosses machetes down at you. Very similar to the dagger douche from earlier, only with more frequent attacks. Run past him and then hop up to grab the power up if you so desire. Also, keep your eye on the bats in this stage. They blend right in with the friggin' background. Here's a pain in the ass if there ever was one. Double eagles. What is this, golf? Let them kind of merge into each other, making it moderately easier for you to slice them both at the same time. And if a ninja accompanies one of them, do him in too. When you get here, hop up these platforms and grab an extra life here. At least this stage is being generous with much needed extra lives, and soon after is a ladder to the third and final non-boss segment. Climb the ladders and wipe out these human versions of those vibrating football games. Quickly scale the wall to get a jump on this ass hat that tosses blades at you, and grab the flame from over here if you wish. This guy throws mace clubs at you. Avoid it and slice him. Climb the ladder, Carefully jump across and take out the soldier in between his attacks to slice him up as you jump. 
These goofballs walk slowly and perform jumping spin kicks. Let them come to you and wipe them out as they attack. Then you've got these statue things that spit fire. Scale the wall, wait for an opening, and quickly attack. Then just as quickly, leap to the next section and take out the soldier before he can shoot. You don't want him firing you off into the pit. Jason Voorhees is guarding this ladder for whatever reason. Slip your way between his axe attacks, kill him, and climb. Kill some more familiar enemies, and if you want a windmill star, trek back a bit after killing this soldier and grab it here. Soon after is the boss, the keymaster and the gatekeeper. They hop around and spit balls of gas. Only one of them actually takes damage, the other one, while still able to hurt you, won't be affected by your attacks, although you can give it enough shots to take it off the screen. Either way, all you have to do is hide under one of these little platforms and these dumbasses will just hop around you. Stand here and keep swiping. Don't worry about which one you're hitting, just make sure you don't veer off the track. Keep it up until they're done for and you'll get a cutscene where you run into Jaquio. He demands the demon statue or he'll cut the throat of that chick. Ryu reluctantly complies and gets sent down a trap door and the girl gets taken away to be sacrificed anyway, as Jaquiel laughs hysterically. Boy, does he ever. Act 5 begins once you've fallen from the trap door into this cave of sorts. Early on, there's a throwing star up here in front of the blade chucker. After dropping down here, you'll meet one of these mad schizo cokeheads that roll around and bounce all over the place. Try to slice him down when he's rolling so his erratic pattern doesn't fuck you up and grab the windmill star here. Then you'll come across another new face, this pale bastard that throws boomerang blades at you. Best bet is to slice him with the windmill star as his attacks are quick and come back to him. Getting close for a short range attack is dangerous. Scale the wall and come back down if you want to switch to a flame. Turn around to kill this green ninja as it sneaks up on you and kill this eagle as you see it come up from below. If you lead it too far onward, you're gonna get your ass kicked by it and a bunch of its friends, including the cokehead. Much easier to do them in one at a time. Scale up these pillars, and on the left side is some health. And soon after is another boomerang brother guarding the entrance to the next segment. Follow the linear path, climbing the ladders along the way of this section, and wipe out all the familiar enemies in your way. Ignore the jumping slash here. You're gonna do all kinds of jumping here and it's a waste of your spirit points. But there is a flame down here on the second portion of the segment. And a windmill star up here in the third portion. Wait for the opening between these attacks to slice through and get it. In the fourth portion, making your way past this drop looks almost impossible at first glance. You've gotta scale your way downward, not to mention avoid this dickhead eagle. Quickly jump backwards so you land low enough on the side of the rock to get under the cliff and to the other side. But speaking of dickhead eagles, there's one right here by the ladder to the next segment. One of the reasons why I hate this auto spawn shit. It's like, where is the opening? The only opening is to get right at the edge as close as possible and he'll be gone after the first kill. This segment is similar to the last in that you climb ladders from one side to the other, making your way through different portions. There's a flame up here in this first portion. The second portion has a new enemy, these jetpack ninjas that scatter ninja stars downward. Slice them in midair, or stay low and avoid the stars. The third portion has a throwing star early on, and after you make your way to the ladder, you have the option of heading up this way and killing off a few green ninjas and swordsmen to get an extra life. It's totally worth it. In the fourth portion, kill this fucking eagle that shows up right off the bat before you venture forward and attract too much attention. And when you see an opening, kill the bazooka man and grab the windmill star. The fifth portion has a cokehead and eagle you want to take out right away, but just bypass the blade chuckers and boomerang blade tosser that shows up from behind right at the ladder. The sixth and final portion at the home stretch is just these knights up top. Don't bother with the boomerang brethren at the bottom, and you'll hit up a short cutscene before the boss battle, where you'll meet Malf, who mentions he knows your father through prior battles, and the next generation battle is on. He'll summon lightning and throw it quickly in your direction. It's nearly impossible to avoid, so the only strategy I could seem to succeed with is simply running up to him, not too close mind you, as contact with him naturally drains your health, 
and just slash away as rapidly as possible. Absorb the hit and readjust your position in front of him before slashing again. At least the game was generous enough to fill your health up completely for this battle regardless of where you were coming into it. After finishing him off, Moth will claim your father is actually still alive and that you'll see him if you proceed. But that'll be the last thing you see, cryptic bitch. Act 6, the final act, continues in the same spot the last one left off at. Head left and kill the soldier and bat right away. And keep running to outrun this goddamn eagle, making sure to slice up these cretins as you run and jump. There's a windmill star here between these green things. Adopt the old strategy of waiting for an opening, and then there's a jump and slash here too. Which you may want to deal with all these goddamn eagles that flock towards you at the end of the segment. If you want the windmill star back at this point, scale your way up these pillars and grab it on the way back down here. Kill the swordsmen, and watch out for the jetpacked star droppers. Kill these dipshits immediately. Use the jump and slash here to assist you on the ones that follow, and reclaim your windmill star here. Climb up this ladder, and this soldier is not making it easy for anyone to get by. Slip in quickly as he's backed up, and slice him pronto. There's a flame here if you want it, then turn around to kill the eagle, and scale up this wall if you need windmill stars. And climb the ladder up. Once you get past these swordsmen, the game vomits all these enemies at you. Kill the bat and quickly jump over the soldier as it bum rushes you. Then squat and kill the eagles and bats that emerge. Just remember to keep moving forward once the coast is clear, because you don't want these shite bags to keep respawning. If you position yourself just right here, you can make the dagger douche disappear, making it slightly easier to get past all this hazard vomiting. Just make sure to kill the eagle as you jump across, and the screen ninja as it jumps across. Climb the ladder, quickly kill this schizo, and wait for the eagle to descend, frying the bastard. Grab the fire wheel here and scale up these pillars, running through everything that's in your way to the next segment. Slice your way through this shit, scale up the pillar, and wipe out the Voorhees and green statue on your way to the next ladder. As soon as you climb out, slash the schizo as he comes to you, and grab the throwing star if you need it and you might against this boomerang bastard up ahead. And grab the flame here if you want an upgrade. When this eagle pops up, back off to chase it off the screen, and time your jump to kill this loser without making contact with him. Scale up these pillars, grab the windmill star back here, and use it against Blade Boy over here. There's an hourglass here to freeze everything up, take advantage of the time there is to advance without mobile enemies. There'll be a shitload of schizos here. Quickly move in and grab the hourglass to freeze them up and move on. When this eagle comes down, keep moving to get it off the screen, kill the spin kick wanker, and quickly turn around to kill the schizo. And then it's one more schizo before you get to the end. Grab the flame on your way through the door. You get a cutscene where Jaquio unveils the masked devil, which turns out to be Ryu's father in an altered, mind-controlled, demonic state, and orders him to fight his son to the death. Ryu realizes he must break the mind control and notices a red orb against the wall, presuming it to be the mind control device. Thankfully, your health is fully restored once again. Daddy Devil will approach you slowly. He won't physically attack you at all in this fight. Instead, fireballs will fly out from the orb and surround him, scattering about in a crazy pattern. You can destroy the fireballs with your attacks, but they respawn very soon after, so whatever. Your main focus is on the orb. Keep your distance from dad and let loose with your flame attacks on it. Hop up on these pillars to leap over him when he gets close and set up shop on the other side. If you run out of spirit, you'll have to resort to using the sword. And obviously you'll only get your shots in while in the direct center. Which limits your time to keep away from your old man. So hopefully you've stocked up on spirit. After taking out the orb, Ryu's father awakens from his hypnosis, returns to human form, and reunites with his son. For all of eight fucking seconds before Jakio kills your father, setting the stage for the final battle of the game. Thankfully, your health is fully restored once again. He'll float back and forth at the ceiling, sending two fireballs at you in a semi-heat-seeking pattern. So you have to stay still momentarily to lure them to one side and quickly run off just before it approaches you to evade them. 
and if you end up positioned directly underneath, well, you'll have to try to squeeze in between the flames. It's a bitch to time, but after getting the gist, you should be able to get away way more often than not. As long as you're positioned accordingly, you'll be able to jump up onto a pillar and swipe at him on his way across. Just make sure that you time this so he's not about to attack you while you're attacking him. There's no sense in taking damage to deal damage, so duck back down and dodge another attack if you're out of position. After defeating it, you'll get a cutscene where you'll rescue Chicky and discover your dad isn't dead after all. But just as he tells you to get the statues out of the temple before the black moon rises and summons the demon, the lunar eclipse promptly takes place and the demon is summoned. This third boss in a row fittingly has three weak spots, the head, the tail, and the heart. The heart is the main target, but you have to destroy the head and tail first to access it. Jump up and swipe to take out the head. Once it's destroyed, it will slide across the screen and it can hurt you, so get away from it. Squat down to take out the tail, and once that's out of the way, jump up to take out the heart. The demon stays in one place at all times, but attacks by jizzing out a barrage of, I don't know, demon semen, I guess? Keep your eye on this at all times, and evade these sticky attacks. After taking out the heart, the demon falls, and finally the game is over. Except for the final cutscene where your dying father tells you to leave him in the temple, which is about to fall apart. Although Ryu begs him to consider otherwise, he assures his son that this was destiny, and dies in your arms. You'll leave with the woman, and watch as the temple blows up in a very drawn out but pretty cool looking destruction sequence. Foster, her CIA boss, phones in and congratulates her on her successful mission to lead Ryu to victory, and then orders her to assassinate him. But Ryu overhears this and tells Foster he's coming for him next. If he can wipe out a 700 year old demon, I'm sure he can handle the measly CIA. He then kisses the girl who reveals her name to be Irene Liu, and they watch the sunrise together, and very likely bang that night. The end. Credits roll, and that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.